let's talk about reverse racism. Okay. okay. I, I, I have a huge audience of, uh, of uh, people that don't look like me that, that follow me. Some of them like me, some of them don't. I never say it right way. Um, I, if I took on this reverse racism thing that there's no such thing as racism, if you're black, you cannot be a racist, like it would go nuclear. What, what are you saying to me that, that, that black? I'm saying people- that anybody can be racist. I've experienced it. I've experienced racism in my life. I've, look, first thing I want to say is we need to take this construct that just because you experience racism, your life is ruined. I mm-hmm. stub my toe. I don't let it ruin my day. Okay. We all stub our toe. It's like, okay, has somebody said some racist things to me in the past? Yes. Do I let it ruin my life or even my day? No, I don't. And I think, by the way, it's a lot different today than even it was in the 1990s when I was growing up in Southwest Ohio, a little bit different in the year 2023. Good, things change, move forward. But I've experienced racism. It's come from white people. It's come from black people. Mm -hmm. I I probably have experienced more racism from black people than I have from white people in my life. I think it might make some people upset to hear that, but I just, it's my experience, right? And I'm speaking the truth. And I think black people have experienced racism from Indian American people and from white people and whatever too. But What I believe is that we should live in a country where we don't judge each other on the color of our skin, but on the content of our character. You you would agree. I believe in it. You would agree that it's still harder for black or browns to get a loan, to get to earn interest, even on a savings account, like a fair. It is, and I'll tell you why it is. Economic disparities. I'll tell you where those economic disparities begin with a broken educational system, which traps kids in the school districts where they're born. That is the civil rights issue of our time, right? Mm. Young kids are trapped by their zip code. It's like a modern ghetto system when it comes to education. The public schools that are spending the most per student are the ones with the poorest results. So I favor school choice on steroids, put money into those parents' hands, dissolve the Department of Education, empower them to send their kids to the best schools. Oh, and by the way, take some of that money from the public school with them, put it in the kid's account, On our plan, that kid graduates with a $250,000 graduation gift when he graduates from high school just by starving the teacher's union-laden bureaucracy. You tell me what's a better use of money. Then it goes upstream of education to the family. You know what? If you grow up in a single-parent household, I don't care what your skin color is. You're eight times more likely to end up in jail. You are eight times more likely to be a drug user, more likely to end up in poverty, less likely to graduate from high school. So now let's take the colorblind. If what, if what happens? I, if, you're, I, I, if you're in a single parent household. Yeah, got, got single parent yeah every, every stat just goes off, off the charts. Off the Drug charts, right? So, 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 so then let's, let's try so, this filter on. How do you on. solve that? How do you solve that? Like my, I was raised by a single mom. Yes. Yeah, so, so, and by the way, I want to be the first to say this. There are many people who succeed despite that. And that's a great thing. But yeah. that doesn't mean that's what we should wish for everyone. That's right. right. And so here's an answer. I visited the south side of Chicago. I went to Kensington, the inner city of, of Philadelphia. These are places where Republican candidates don't go. There are women in those communities who are paid more money not to have a man in the house than to have the man in the house. So the uh, federal government should not create an incentive structure. I don't blame the families. I blame a federal government that creates bad incentives for these people. People get paid, in many cases, more money not to go to work than to go to work. That's a bad incentive. You're talking about Kensington. People get paid free crack pipes and free needles through the so-called aid programs instead of having a path off of drugs like heroin. So I think we do have a bad habit in this country of paying people to do the exact opposite of what we should want them to do, what's best for them. 